Hi there, good morning. Uh, for those of you on the West Coast, um, we are gonna kick off our weekly demo this week. My name is Phil Birch. I'm a product marketing manager here at Trey.io. I am joined by one of our customer success engineers, Andrew Steele, who uh, is in San Francisco while I'm at Las Vegas at uh, Gartner's conference, as well as uh, AWS's uh, event as well here this week. So today we're going to get into two separate workflows. Uh, the first half of this is actually in a traditional ETL job uh, that's scheduled every, that could be scheduled every hour, every day, or every week. And the goal for this is to make sure that we are extracting data from Marketo specifically for things like unsubscribes, uh, which are traditional, which are extremely relevant for things like GDPR compliance. The transformation and mapping occurs automatically within this workflow, and then it's loaded into Amazon Redshift uh, in such a way that, that now everyone in the organization can actually access this data uh, in real time or as these batches of batch jobs are completed. And again, because this is built in a visual low code fashion, our platform can be utilized by developers as well as business users to actually own these processes themselves from the same general automation platform, which we provide. The second half of this uh, workflow that we're gonna see is actually pulling that data from Redshift so that we know who is unsubscribed, what uh, campaigns they've, they've engaged with, et cetera, and ultimately updating intercom in real time to drive better conversion through personalized messaging uh, at scale. So ultimately, you know, again, by having these, this visual low code builder, we're making it so that every type of persona can ultimately help solve this huge escalating problem with the explosion of SaaS applications, you know, at scale and, and allowing IT to focus on, you know, potentially more valuable uh, types of projects like, you know, migrating to a new CRM or a new data warehouse, et cetera. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing and kick it over to my, uh, my compatriot, Andrew, to actually walk through what these uh, workflows actually look like. Thank you, Phil. So as Phil mentioned, today's use case is really centered around ETL, pulling data out of one system, pushing it into another, and then acting on that uh, aggregated data source to perform um, other operations. So here I am within the Trey workflow builder. And as Phil mentioned, Trey has this visual building interface where it's really easy to um, look at a particular integration and, and see exactly the logic within uh, the integration. So you're not looking at this huge block of code. You can see this logical top to bottom uh, flow of exactly the different operations that are occurring. So to just run through this particular workflow, uh, we have uh, a scheduled trigger. So it's running once a week and it's basically retrieving all the new leads that have been generated within Marketo from the past week. It's generating a new CSV file and then adding each of those leads with some pre-specified fields to that CS file, CSV file, which is then later exported to Amazon uh, Simple Storage Service or AWS S3. So something like S3, uh, this data is all living in a CSV file where it's probably a little hard to access on demand. And, um, but you can imagine something like contract data or, or like a contract file or other digital assets that would be pretty useful to, to have backed up. Um, something like S3 being particularly useful. So instead of using uh, S3, I wanna use uh, a more easily accessible database technology uh, such as a data warehouse. Now, Phil mentioned previously that Trey has a connector library of over 350 connectors. And that's really because Trey is tool agnostic. We, we really want to empower our customers to use the tools that are right for their organization. So for a database in particular, if my company uses something like Postgres or MySQL, Trey fully empowers uh, our customers to use those technologies that are right for their use case. Um, another thing that I want to point out too is that although we have this very vast uh, connector library, it's also 
uh, we have a dedicated team that builds out new connectors that are released every single day. And so if we do, uh, in the rare case, uh, do not have a connector that is present within our library, uh, we're constantly uh, augmenting this library um, every day. So in this case, uh, I actually want to use Amazon's Redshift database, and I can just drag and drop this specific uh, connector into the canvas. And as you can see here, now we have um, a new step here, and I'm just going to rename this add row to database. And what I want to configure this to do is add any new leads that are generated in Marketo into a specific uh, Redshift database. And so you can imagine that now we have a specific table that's ingesting new leads from Marketo. We could also create other workflows that are maybe up uh, adding new leads that are coming in from Salesforce or Intercom or uh, a sales outreach tool like SalesLoft. And the, really, the real importance in that is that we are using all these different systems, interacting with leads in all these disparate platforms, but then we can kind of pull those uh, leads that we're interacting with into one single database. So we have one aggregated view of the customers or the prospects that we're interacting with. So once this, this logic is built out and maybe I've tested a little to where I know that it's functioning as expected, all I would have to do is go to the right hand corner where I have this green button and just enable this workflow to where I can put all of my energy, all of my attention to actually building out the logic of this integration instead of having to worry about uh, building out a specific API or if Marketo's API is updated, worrying about any updates I need to make to the, the, um, the connector itself, Trey handles all of that for me to where, again, I can just focus on providing the, the actual logic to the flow or the business logic. So now that I have this consolidated view of all the leads that my company is interacting with, I can begin to act on it. So that brings me to this second workflow where if we walk through this uh, visual canvas again, we have a scheduled trigger. So it's running every 30 minutes and we're retrieving any leads that have been updated within the last 30 minutes from, again, this Redshift database that we've created. And then we're iterating through each of those leads and then we're checking, has that lead been unsubscribed? So maybe an unsubscribe occurred within another platform like uh, Marketo, for example. We want to make sure that we're in compliance with GDPR and we do not maybe um, keep them in other emailing campaigns that are run through different platforms. Well, we can easily propagate that unsubscribe action to these other systems um, using you know, helper connector steps like Boolean conditions where we can perform a logical check to see all right, for this specific lead, was that lead unsubscribed? And if it was unsubscribed, then we can propagate that to our intercom system. Now, in this visual builder, um, it's really easy to extend functionality as I showed previously in that other flow where we added that uh, redshift step. And so you could imagine in this, uh, in this workflow where maybe instead of uh, doing lead unsubs uh, unsubscriptions with Intercom, I instead want to um, track the fact that a user visited three blog posts. So that's, that's actually information that Intercom can actually track. And I could easily set up this logic to say, hey, if a user has visited three blog posts uh, within the past week or something like that, add them to a specific email marketing campaign um, within Marketo. So you have all these different um, operations that you can fully leverage all the, the, the different tools in your tech stack instead of solely being limited to one uh, individual service or tool. So that's really kind of a brief overview of um, 
kind of what's possible on the trade platform. So I think um, with that said, I, I think we can move to uh, questions or just demoing specific uh, futures of the trade platform. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you to Andrew again, and uh, hopefully we'll speak with you soon. Thank you.